second year of coming to the WRTR and the RTR. Um, previously, I had stayed at a caravan last April in Pahrump, Nevada, and that was my first time in a caravan. I was in Pahrump, Nevada, and that was a great experience and made me friends. And at the first WRTR our, and RTR, camped with a group of people and we kept in touch all year and came back and camped together at the second one at Dome Rock and that was wonderful. I love that. I think I really gained some confidence about being a solo woman and taking care of my own rig. I especially loved the um, how to not get stuck or how to get unstuck and there was a woman, I have her card, I forget her name now, that had a 4x4 Jeep. And although she was representing 4x4, she had great information on anybody on how, what to do if you got stuck, equipment you should carry, you know, you should learn how to um, perhaps change your own, you know, air filter. And actually had us practicing taking off tires and putting tires on and I did it. I sat down and used my thighs and pulled off that big tire and then rolled it back on. And that was great. That was just great to have those types of workshops and things. And I needed that, you know, because I have this rig and the tires are kind of big and at some point I might have to put that spare on. The other one I loved is the self-defense. And it was a breakout. I don't think I got there in time to go to maybe the major safety talk. I'm trying to remember back now, but it was a breakout uh, in one of the smaller groups and we really practiced and, um, you know, moves if someone comes up from behind you and walking confidently and uh, those types of things. So that was great too. I love that. I think anybody who's new, and I'm fairly new, even though I've camped and done small trips, but anybody who is kind of new and hasn't driven and camped and um, just wants practical nuts and bolts, and then who wants to talk with other women, you know, and just um, what their experiences are and how they feel and what do they do about loneliness when you're driving for five days to New Orleans, Louisiana. <laughs> it's day after day and you realize it's kind of lonely out here, you know, and what do you do for that? And um, So I think that's a great young or older. I think anybody who, who isn't real experienced, it would be great. And I think for someone who is experienced, just the camaraderie and learning some of those practical things too. Maybe you always travel with a partner and that partner for one reason or another is not with you now and you know can you take care of things you know if you break down and what should you do and I am just putting those miles on the road in the driver's seat I'm real comfortable driving the van now and I've boondocked a few times in cities I've stayed at rest stops and truck stops and one truck stop was so noisy I said I can't do this I'm gonna go you know, down because I saw another truck stop and on the way there was a, a little hotel with a parking lot that was half empty and I just kind of pulled in. It was quiet and I just jumped in bed and slept there for the night. So boondocking on the road. My son was living in Modesto, California for a while and he wasn't living somewhere where I could park at his place and so I did some stealth camping down there and just, and Bob Wells has interviewed wonderful people uh, about their experiences and I've seen some other YouTube videos so I kind of knew the things to do and not do from a few YouTubers and Bob Wells site so um, I felt like I was kind of prepared that first time it was, it was a little scary you know gosh is someone gonna but it always worked out well it was always just no one knew I was there full time in my van since November 15th when the people moved into my home and I was sleeping in my van in my driveway while I was showing the house because I have a little house in Northern California. I wasn't ready to sell it, so I'm just renting it. And so I just moved the van over to our farm. Our family has a small farm and I just stayed on the farm for a few weeks while I was getting things ready to go. And until Thanksgiving when the family got together and then I took off, you know. 
about a week after Thanksgiving and headed to New Orleans, Louisiana and visited my aunties in, in Los Angeles on the way and visited family along the way, but then I hightailed it to New Orleans to do the holidays with my daughter. Well, my van I've been working on for a couple years now and it was in stages and I did a lot of the work on every stage, but I got either friends who knew carpentry or a guy at work knew an electrician who was willing to hook up my solar for me. So I started with sound deadening the van because I read about that. I put all the insulation in. Um, my friend had the tools and started the cut in the roof and I finished it and we put the fan in. Um, I put the panels on the top. I used VHB tape and he turned a bond and stuck the panels on the top and um, bought a Renogy, 200 watts of Renogy Solars and MPPT controller and an inverter and ran all the wiring and then turned it over to my electrician friend to kind of hook it all up. But another friend then helped me with these. So we put them up together, the bead board put up together and I painted the whole thing. And then I had another person who was recommended. This was going to be the main pro guy for doing cabinets for me. I envisioned a sink with water and everything. And he had to have some emergency surgery. And then he had to have a second one when he came out of it. And this was late in the summer. And I knew that he wasn't going to be able to do it. So I started looking around. Because once again, I'd heard people talk about, and Bob Wells, just do a put-in. Don't spend money. So this was in my shed. And this was in, it was a little, you know, utility rack. These I had in the house I was using. This was from a friend's garage that he never used. This beautiful piece of wood here. And I bought those drawers on Amazon. And they just seemed that'd be great because they were a lot of drawers and they weren't too wide or too high and then I was at Harbor Freight getting something and I fell in love with their colored you know um, toolboxes they had red and yellow and black but I don't know that green and I think I already have this pillow so I think I was thinking about and I and when I started looking inside the drawers I realized this would be perfect for a little kitchen how I use it. I just kept watching videos over and over and over and then I made the leap and bought the equipment and it was in stages definitely. So I cook in this and then during the day because I don't have a lot of solar but during the day is when I'll cook in my instant pot. Right now I'm charging both my laptop and my extra that's an external lithium battery. The TV that is new and it was on the free table at the RTR or I think it was the WRTR so I grabbed it and this comes out, pulls out, and I can just work and have a large screen right here to look at. And I like work, working standing up too. So that works. That was the main reason for doing it here. So if I was going to work, I would have it. I like to do a stretching routine. And by putting these things in that are pretty, they're not very deep, they're pretty narrow, I can turn my refrigerator around in the morning and move that little step stool and I can lay right here and do my yoga routine. I'm discovering that I am learning a little bit more about myself. I'm slowing down. I'm more relaxed. Um, I'm happy. These are things that I've kind of discovered. I People talk about being close to nature and I think that's a big part of it. I love being in nature and that has been great. That has been wonderful. And the friendships have been wonderful. So, you know, if you want to meet more people or want a community, there's definitely a community out here.